So, it's 2015, it's the start of a new year, so it seems only fair to look back at the year that was and my personal favourite films of 2014. To start with, we have the obvious disclaimers. I am one person. I obviously didn't see every film last year. Of course I didn't. So if I didn't see your favourite film of last year, it isn't going to be on this list. Sorry. Another restriction I have is the fact that I live in the UK. And so there's a lot of films that simply weren't released in 2014. Films such as Birdman, Whiplash, Big Hero 6. I've heard extremely good things about them, but they haven't been released in this country yet. Once they are, I'll look, I'll watch them and I'll review them, but they can't exactly be in a best of 2014 list. That being said, this is my personal top 10 list of the best films I saw in the cinema in 2014. I unashamedly love Tom Hardy. I think he is an absolutely superb actor. I think he is absolutely one of the best actors out there today. And this, for me, was his best film of the year. It was really close between this and Locke uh, for my number 10 spot. It was, it's rare, to be honest, for two films by the same actor to be buying for, that, for the same spot. But I thought they were probably my number 10 and number 11. I really did like the drop a lot. It just, the way it ratcheted up tension, the way you knew there was something under the surface of Tom Hardy's character. And I also thought it was a really good send-off for James Gandolfini in what I believe was his last role. Captain America 2, for me, displayed the maturation of Marvel. It wasn't just explosions and funny one-liners. It had them, don't get me wrong, and they were very enjoyable, but it had a good plot. It was essentially, as a lot of people I think have said, a spy thriller, and it was all the better for it. And it really does excite me for where Marvel are going to go in their cinematic universe going forwards. And I'm not exactly the only one to be really looking forward to Avengers 2. And this was a really good setup to that, especially with Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch in that end credit scene. X-Men Days of Future Past does a lot of things right. Not only does it have a brilliantly confusing title, which I quite enjoyed, it also erases X-Men 3 from everything, which is just a good thing. But also, it has the best action set pieces of any X-Men film, as far as I'm concerned. The opening fight between X-Men and Sentinels was absolutely brilliant. I'm not sort of that di divested in the comics of X-Men, so I know a lot of them, but I don't know them all. And so seeing fresh new ones come in, fighting these Sentinels was really excited. I enjoyed every moment, of, and the acting from Michael Fassbender and James McAvoy, along with everyone else, but those two, absolutely super. I'm so good. And James McAvoy and Patrick Stewart finally face-to-face. -face. That, was, that was good fun. That was good fun. <laughs> this film had the male performance of the year by a mile from Jake Gyllenhaal. He is absolutely unbelievable in this film. I couldn't, but I was used to Jake Gyllenhaal being good in films because I've seen Jake Gyllenhaal films before, but I couldn't believe how good he was in this. He is absolutely incredible. It is the performance of his career without any shadow of a doubt. But coupled with his superb performance is a genuinely great film. Uh, it, it needed the film to complement the performance and vice versa, and it really does. Nightcrawl was a fantastic film. You hate to love Lou Blue, but the fact is you do, and you're rooting for such a despicable character. Um, and that's simply kudos to both Jay Gyllenhaal and the direction in this film. Really great film. So this is a film that I think probably flew under the radar for most people this year. It did for me, uh, for the most part. I think I only heard of it one or two days before I went to see it, in fact. And it turned out to be probably the funniest film I've seen all year. 
it's darkly humoured, but it had me doubled up in laughing on more than one occasion. It's from the makers of Flight of the Concords, and you can see that brand of humour coming in, that sort of, not so realist, but that that Flight of the Concords humour coming in. So if you like that show, and frankly you should, then I think you'll really like this film. And I certainly, I thought it was absolutely hilarious. So we're now in the top five, and we start off with the second Marvel film in the top 10, Guardians of the Galaxy. Then, to be honest, number four and number five have flipped places so many times for me, it's ridiculous. But this was the most fun I've had in a superhero film for a good couple of years, at least, since the Avengers, essentially. Everyone brought something to the table in this film. But for me, the biggest surprise was Chris Pratt as Star-Lord. When I heard about the casting for that, I was really sceptical. I mean, I just knew Chris Pratt, as I think a lot of people did, from Parks and Rec, and I just did not see how he could go from that to the lead in a superhero film. But he absolutely smashed it out of the park, and I can't wait for Guardians of the Galaxy 2 whenever that's supposed to come out, because I can't remember off the top of my head. But I am looking forward to it so much. Oh, this film could have gone so badly wrong. Thankfully, it didn't. They did it right. This film made me feel eight years old again. I absolutely loved it. It was the most fun I've had in the cinema all year. I loved every single second of it. And Everything is Awesome is the most horribly addictive song I have heard all year. Whoever came up with that, was an evil genius, and I both love and hate him. I love Wes Anderson. He is easily one of my favourite directors working today, and this might well be the best film he has done so far. It is immaculately constructed. It looks absolutely spectacular. In a way, only his films do. That's one of the reasons why I really like him. He, You can show me 30 seconds of a Wes Anderson film and I will know that it's a Wes Anderson film because he has such a unique style. It has real heart, but is also simultaneously incredibly funny. I mean, it's easily one of the funniest films I saw all year. I re-watched it a couple of days ago and was laughing in almost every scene, actually, which is really hard to do for any film. And of course, it's topped off with a truly memorable performance from Ray Fiennes. I don't think anyone really saw that coming, apart from Wes Anderson. And I I doubted it. I really admit that I doubted it, but he was proved so gloriously right, and I thank him for it. This was number one on my list for a long time this year. It was my most looked forward to film of the year, mainly because I'd seen The Raid, and I absolutely loved The Raid. And from what I'd heard, this film was going to expand on everything that The Raid did in the first place. And I thought, to be honest, if it can even match what The Raid did, I'll absolutely love it. As it turned out, it did expand on everything that The Raid had done. And... Oh my God, it blew my bloody mind. I remember seeing this film at an advanced screening a couple of weeks before it came out on general release, walking out of the cinema and saying that it might be the best martial arts action film I'd ever seen. I then went to see it when it came on to general release, came out of the cinema and said, you know what, I've changed my mind. That is the best martial arts action film I've ever seen. For a martial arts film to have anything other than a paper-thin plot, basically a series of excuses to get you from one fight to the next, is rare, to say the least. The Raid 2 has a genuine plot. It is an enjoyable, engaging plot. It does take a backseat to the fight scenes, but they're the best fight scenes, I think, that have ever been put on film. The last two fights, especially, are just amazing. I mean, they just are. Uh, I know most martial arts films build up to the last fight. 
but the last fight in this film, I mean, I don't stand up and applaud or applaud in cinemas. Uh, I just don't see the point. Unless the director's in the room, why bother? Both times that I saw this film in the cinema and the last fight finished, I had to fight myself to not stand up and give an ovation for it. It's that good. I can't believe how good the fight side is for, but those last two especially are just out of this world. It's not perfect. Uh, I understand why Yayan Ruhien, and if I pronounced that correctly, I'll be amazed, so my apologies if it was wrong, but I understand why he is in the film. He is the choreographer, and he's an amazing choreographer, but if you're going to have him in the second film, differentiate his character enough from Mad Dog in the first film, who he also played, to make it obvious that he is a completely different character. Honestly, though, I just don't care. Uh, the Raid 2 got my blood pumping more than just about any film this year. In fact, only one did it more. The Babadook came out of absolutely bloody nowhere for me. I'd never heard of it. Uh, my friend literally saw a one-paragraph article in a magazine, knows I love horror films, and suggested we go and see it. And I agreed with him. As it turns out, this tiny Australian horror film is the scariest horror film I've ever seen. This film got to me. It got under my skin. It affected me. It gave me my first sleepless night thanks to a film in 15 or 20 years. And I absolutely love it for it. It combines a director who knows how to get to her audience with one of the best performances I have seen anyone ever give in a film. Essie Davis is so believable in this film. She makes the film what it is. Her performance and the film in general are completely Oscar worthy and it does kind of annoy me the fact that because it is such a small Australian horror film there isn't a chance in hell it gets the plaudits it deserves. I will admit to being a jaded somewhat desensitized horror junkie essentially I've been watching horror films for 15 or 20 years I always love them but they don't affect me anymore I mean I jump at the jump scares but that's because they're jump scares and everyone does I didn't think any film could really affect or disturb me anymore, and I was wrong. The Babadook proves conclusively that if you take the time and the effort to make a quality film, then just like any other genre in horror, you can absolutely get to your audience and you can affect them, and it proves that horror can still be effective. Ever since I saw this film, I've been on a quest to tell everyone about it and I have done. Everyone I know knows about this film and knows my opinion on it. It is by a mile easily the best film I saw in 2014 and it's one of the best films I have ever seen in my life. I cannot wait to see what writer and director Jennifer Kent does next or what Essie Davis does next because I'll be in the front of the line for both.